Welcome to the Purpose Driven Mom Show, episode 397. I'm excited to give you another sneak peek into the Purpose Driven Mom Summit, which is coming on April 5th. Uh, this is a conversation I had with Marlene Spence, uh, literally just got off and I was like, we need to put this on the podcast because I needed it coming off three weeks of being sick. I was like, I need to hear of this so I can implement with my family. We're talking all about visual schedules and how no matter what the kids age, having a visual schedule can help them become more independent, uh, have less power struggles, help them get some more control and you release the mental load. So we're going to air this. If you like these sessions, you're going to want to make sure you're ready for when the summit uh, sign up comes in just a few weeks and uh, go check out Marlene. We'll have everything linked in the show notes at a purpose driven mom.com slash podcast 397. But enjoy this interview that I did with Marlene Spence all about creating visual schedules in your home and for your kids. All right, welcome back to the Purpose Driven Mom Summit. I'm excited to share this incredible guest. We've got Marlene Spence back to talk all about the visual schedules and how it can help keep your family routines running smoothly. Marlene, thanks for coming back this year. Thanks so much for having me. Before we jump in, we probably have some people who've not gotten to connect with you. If you could tell us just a little bit about you and your family. Yes, absolutely. So I am a mom of two. My kids are now 15 and 12, which is so crazy. Um, I am a Toronto mom and wife, uh, and I have taken the last 20 years, which is also like, wow. <laughs> uh, for the last 20 years, um, I've dedicated it to supporting um, families and educators and really helping individuals be able to understand some challenging behaviors and um, really just helping educators and helping families and parents be able to feel more confident and calm uh, and being able to manage some of those really challenging behaviors. And we are thankful for it. Uh, I know that since we met a couple of years ago, I have had incorporated some visual schedules. So my kids are now, God, uh, kindergarten and second grade, right? So this was like, you know, they were so much later when I had my preschooler and stuff. But the visual schedule thing was an absolute game changer for <laughs> arguments and like, what are we doing and things like that. So I'm excited to share with the parents today who are probably struggling to make their routines flow. So let's start with just the basics of like, what is a visual scheduler? Yes, absolutely. So uh, when you think of your visual schedule, I want you to think of for, you know, us adults, we often have our to-do list, All right? And so we have our to-do list, we have... These are the things we're going to accomplish throughout the day. And we visually write it out so that we can remember and we like to check it off so that we can go back. And, and that's kind of what we do as adults. So your visual schedule is similar for our kids. They allow kids to visually see what the expectations are. And so this can be uh, broken down into the routines of the tasks. So for example, your morning routine, What's happening in your morning? What are some of those expectations? You know, are they going to get up, change into pajamas, brush their teeth, wash their face, have breakfast? Then those visually uh, will be, be displayed um, for your child to be able to see. Um, and if it's your bigger schedule, so if it's more you're showing your timeline, kind of your roadmap for the day, um, you know, Wednesdays is gymnastic, Saturdays is soccer, um, then you might have that on a calendar where they can visually be able to see. What that yeah. Is. I love this concept too, because especially like my kids can read now. Right. But like when we, they couldn't read, I remember just saying things like, we're going to go do this. And it took a while for me to click. And I was a high school teacher. Right. So like my context was like all yeah. here, what we're doing. And they were like, what are we doing? They had no concept yeah. of where we were going. So even for kids who can read, just knowing that. And the, the other thing I love um, is like that we get a glance now that we have sports and activities because yeah. while I know we have cheer two times a week and scouts these right. days, all those things, they don't know. So my daughter would be like, do we have a nothing day today? Do we have a nothing day? Like she'll just ask like, is, or what are we doing today? So yeah. just empowering them um, with this. So could you talk a little bit more about like the benefits? Like I just shared my own personal experience. Yeah. I'd love to hear from you, from other parents who were like, eh, this feels like another thing. Like what are really the benefits of having something like this? Yes. Oh my goodness. So there are so many benefits and uh, I'll even just go back to even why I started this in the, in the first place. So uh, again, working in education, I was, my job was to go into classrooms and, you know, those kids who were struggling and, and um, you know, really having a hard time seeing challenging behaviors, going in and working with uh, the teaching teams to, you know, understand what was going on and help them and help the students. And so number one thing I always found was within the environment was creating structure in that environment 
And did they know what the expectations were and when they were coming? And so um, learned so much about how powerful visual schedules were, um, even within you know my work experiences. And then I became a mom, and I was like, okay, you know, I don't need, I don't know, do I need video schedules? Well, when my kids were like toddlers, I was like, I felt so frazzled all the time. I felt there was no structure. I felt like I was coming and going. Um, things were all over the place. And I was like, okay, I need to remember the skills that I use within yes. my work experience and bring them into my home. And that's kind of where I started the, the visual schedules. Visual schedules um, are fantastic because they help with predictability. So like, as you said, right, your kids are always like, is it time for me to have the iPad? Is it, you know, are we going anywhere today? What's the plan? And they want to know. And it is definitely anxiety reducing when they know um, what is expected. So again, I think if we woke up every day where we had to wait on someone to tell us what was happening for that day, what were we going to be doing? Are we going shopping today? Are we going? Just the anxiety of like, right? That would bring a lot of anxiety for a lot of us. Um, and so again, these visual schedules really reduce that anxiety um, really allow your child to know what's happening, predictability, um, which again, result in less tantrums, less like, you know, the, the back and forth and the power struggles of, um, you know, I thought we were going to the park now, or I want the iPad now, or, you know, all of that, um, again, is reduced because now they wake up and they're seeing that where that fits on their, their timeline. Um, and as you said, it's also empowering. So visual schedules help uh, your children to be more independent. All our kids are striving to be more independent. Again, they don't want us to be saying every step of the day. They want to be able to make their own decisions. And again, they're going to keep fighting you until you allow them to. So this is a great way to empower them. Um, and, and say things like, okay, so look, these are, this is our morning routine. These are the things we need to do. What order do you want them to be done in? Right. And again, being able to give them that choice, being able to show them, um, you know, what's happening. And this is how we, um, this is time these are time management skills, right? This is how we're going to manage our time. So there's so much, um, also just in executive functioning skills, um, again, being able to, to, um, time management, knowing how to initiate, um, problem solve, like there's just so many skills as well that they learn using visual schedules. Yeah. And these are the skills that they're not taught any, like anywhere else. I feel like school doesn't teach them. Like I have a lot of people who have come to me and like, oh, do something for like teens because they're not being taught it at yeah. school. And I think that a lot, especially for kids, I was reading this thing, I was talking about like the power that like kids don't have, right? Like a lot of kids power is like taken from them because we yeah. make all their decisions. And again, like their safety mm -hmm. and like age appropriateness yeah. and stuff, but allowing kids to have some sort of choice, allowing them to feel involved in that is really, really beneficial for them. And I feel like the visual schedules can allow that. Yeah, exactly. They do. They yeah. Do. So, okay. Before we talk about kind of some logistics to getting started, I want to answer one thing that I'm sure you probably hear that I feel like if I'm the mom watching right now is probably thinking, but like, I don't have enough time for another thing to do, right? Like, cause obviously like we have to set them up, <laughs> like we have to get them yep. started with them. And immediately when we hear cool things, we get excited. And then mm -hmm. reality of like, I don't have the time to get this done. So let's talk about that first before we get to kind of like how we can get started. Yeah. And so sometimes we make things more complex than they actually really should be. So, I mean, we already, you know, if I, if I talk to a parent, they already kind of know what they're going to do tomorrow or on the weekend, you already kind of know it. It's just a matter of now. Uh, and this is why I also created Rewardums, just to make that even more simpler, right? Um, which Rewardums is just stickers. So now you're just actually putting what's in your mind and you're just putting that on, on paper. So it's, it, it isn't additional work. It's really just being able to now, um, in again, in a visual form, um, lay out what's going to be happening for the day. It doesn't have to be another thing. I think we often want to make things another thing. Well, because, you know, we see the thing on Pinterest and we want to do it right, right? But knowing that, like, it's okay to be done however it works for your family. And I think that's yeah. 
part of that flexibility is what's so appealing about it is because yeah. every single family just has different needs, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. let's talk about how to get started. We've sold them. They're like, yes, I need yeah. this. <laughs> okay. Maybe I don't have to be extra. Some people are in the background, like I'll be a little extra. It's fine. Um, how do we get started? Because there are there's so many nuances to our day, right? Like there's so many things we have to do so it can feel overwhelming. What's kind of some of the first things we can do to implement this in our homes? Yeah. So again, I think um, we don't want this overwhelming. So first we just want to be really realistic um, and don't get too caught up on the, the, the Pinterest, you know, mm -hmm. the, the fantastic that don't, we don't need to do that. Even if you need to just get sticky notes and, you know, or get the object of whatever it is and as a symbol, just keep it very simple and realistic. Um, and again, think about what the schedule is. Um, think about your routines. So I would just start out by your basic routines, your morning routine, your bedtime routine, what is their kind of um, midday or if they're in school or kind of, or preschool, what is their preschool and morning and sorry, preschool or after school routines. Um, and just think about those things. What does that, what does that look like? Um, and then just write it down, right? Write it down so you kind of know what that is. And then you want to think of, okay, so which part of this can they choose from? So, and again, the example, you know, for morning routine, um, you know, if it's, you know, they need to wake up, you know, have a shower, change their clothes, brush their teeth, have breakfast, um, does it matter the order? right? Can they go have breakfast first? Like, what are some of those things that we can kind of let go of um, so that they can be able to, to choose? So just start very simple. Um, and again, this is not something where you're in charge. You want to have your child involved in this whole decision process as well. So being able to say, hey, look, we're going to kind of, um, you know how I always have to repeat and tell you what's coming up next. Um, I want you to be more in charge or I want you uh, or mommy doesn't want to talk so much anymore. So this is what we're going to do. And, you know, then you, you introduce and you lay out kind of these are the expectations. Um, what would you like to do? Or, you know, where, where do you want to put these or how is this going to be helpful for you? Mm -hmm. So definitely get them involved as well. Okay. I want to talk power struggles from two different lenses. I want to start with us as the parent, and then we'll talk about with the kids. Yeah, this yes. was the one thing I feel like I heard you say that really clicked for me because you know I you know I teach routines and stuff too, and I was getting very formulaic because in my brain, I, of course I want my kids to brush their teeth before they get dressed because they're going to get toothpaste on their clothes, and that's annoying to me. But what I had to do was release the control of like whatever. I don't care because the order doesn't really matter. It's the outcome at the end and giving them that choice. So now our morning routine flows pretty nicely, less nagging because of that. But I, it, it took, there was mental gymnastics yes. to get there. For us parents who kind of, we're used to having the control. We're used to it being our way. Can you give us some advice on, on how to let that go a little bit? Yeah, I think like, as you said, it's recognizing, right? What is my end goal? Like, I think it just even questioning it. Does this really matter? Is it really a big deal? Do we just kind of want to get out of the house on time? Because then you're spending 15 minutes, you know, power struggling with, you know, do you brush your teeth first or to put your clothes on? Whereas you can put your clothes on and then we're just going to put an apron over you and then you can brush your teeth, right? So sometimes, again, it's just being able to reflect and be like, is this, how big is, how big is this problem? This is another thing I do with kids, right? How big is this problem? And, um, is it really an issue that is worth, you know, the power struggle? Mm. Um, also the apron. Why haven't I not thought of putting an apron? In <laughs> I'm sending my kids to school. I'm not even lying. They got toothpaste all over them. And I'm like, it is what it is. They brush their teeth. But clear. Thank you. you. We're done. Yeah, you've saved my yeah, life. There we go. Aprons now for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Sometimes, again, it's those simple things. Like, okay, so is it like the worst thing if they have toothpaste? Or again, now we're just teaching them how to remove the toothpaste from, you know, their shirt. And if they're not liking having to do that, well, then now they've kind of learned, oh, okay, I, you know what? I think I'm going to wait until I put on or wait until I brush my teeth. Um, or, ten, or I'm going to brush my teeth first and then put my get yeah. dressed later. Yeah. Right? It helps sometimes them learn. again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, sometimes they, they've got to be able to problem solve it on their own. Right. They've got to be able to kind of see the fail 
um, and realize, mm, okay, maybe this is, maybe there's a better way to do that. Yeah. Yeah. We went through that with the breakfast because my daughter learned she prefers to, she doesn't want to brush her teeth and then eat breakfast. She's like, that's gross. Like, I don't want to do that. And she did that for a couple of times. She was like, I'll just brush my teeth right away. And she was like, oh, I don't like that. And so now it's like, well, no, I'm going to eat my breakfast first. I'm like, beautiful. Great. So naturally, like you figured it out. But I think it's, it is very hard for a lot of us parents to like yeah. release that control. So let's, yeah. let's talk power struggles on the other side of it. We've got this new system. We're giving it a try. And my kid is like, not about it. Like, how can we help get them on board with starting to follow it a little bit, not being like, well, look, I, you know, maybe I checked all my things off. It's tablet time. Like just trying to like, or um, I don't know if this is developmental. So maybe you can tell me, I have an eight-year-old and like the little white lies are starting to come out. So I'm like, I wonder if this is like an age appropriate thing of like, did you X, Y, Z? And she'll be like, yeah, I totally did. And I'm like, brushing the teeth right like, like let me smell your breath right like, well yeah, I, yeah. like we're like in that age so I'm hoping that's developmental because it's all it is totally it is totally developmental yeah yeah so what, what do we do with some of these uh what are the common power struggle type things and stuff that you help parents kind of navigate through with this yeah so first I think we need to know that it's going to happen I think for some reason as parents we just think that we're going to have kids that do never power struggle. So I want to say it's going to happen and it's normal and developmentally appropriate for these power struggles to happen. There's lots that's happening. They're trying to find their boundaries, how much they can push, how much they can get away with. They're discovering what they're capable of doing. Okay, so there's there's lots that's going to that's going to happen. Um, and so again, I think it is having these conversations and allowing them to know what decisions they can make, okay, and what decisions they can't. Because of course, you're the parent, so you are going to set those overall boundaries, uh, which they want to, right? Again, our kids find security in when we're able to um, set those, those boundaries. Uh, they may not always like it, but it definitely does make them feel safe. And so... Um, I think just being able to hear them, be able to hear between the lines of, um, you know, them saying, no, I don't do that, uh, or I don't want to do that, um, is really them saying, like, I just want to be able to do it on my time. I want to be able to do it again. I want to be able to have choice to do it. Um, so my daughter, as I said, you know, is a teen now, and, you know, she will tell me, uh, the moment I say like, okay, like make sure you do the dishes and she'll be like, oh my gosh, mom, now I'm not going to do the dishes right now because you just told me I was just about to do them. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. Right. And she will literally like, she will not do them now. Like she has to do it on her own time. So she will wait like 30 minutes <laughs> and then go into the kitchen and do it on her own. Um, but one strategy that I've also used for that was, you know, cause I found that I was also like, you no, know, don't forget to take the garbage. Don't forget to do all this. And um, then I had them create the schedule. And I said, well, you tell me now when you're going to be doing your homework, when you plan to take the garbage out, write that on your timeline and then present me with your schedule so that I can see when you're going to be doing the dishes and when you're going to be doing your homework so that I'm not always, so then I'm not the one going, when is this? When is that happening? When is this happening? So that is something that you can definitely do. Um, again, you can even do it with your younger ones, but you're going to be doing it, you know, along them, alongside them. Uh, but it's that skill, again, that you're really helping them to be able to um, know how to independently make choices and how to prioritize things in your day and um, them understanding how to do that. So definitely, um, you know, in those power struggles, you, you understand that that's what they're looking for. They are looking for power. They are looking for some control. So you want to find those ways that they're able to um, get that in a in a safe, of course, in, a, in an age appropriate way, um, and honor you know their feelings and, and validate that they are definitely heard and seen. Um, but at the same time, of course, as a parent, you want to be able to set those boundaries and be consistent as well. Yeah, those are some really good tips. I'm wondering also for um, a lot of us moms, I feel like we create a lot of the routines, we kind of run the ship in our homes, but we have our partners, we want to like get on board with it. Yeah. Um, and this is a conversation I had with my husband when we were getting ready for like New Year's goals. 
And I was like, oh, I want to like have family meeting and we'll talk about our New Year's goals. And I said, you know, one of the things uh, that I'm frustrated with, I said to him, I was like, is I feel like I'm always spearheading these things, right? Like I'm the one who's like, okay, we need to get them back on like their whatever routines. And this, yeah. it's a lot of mental load on me. Um, I could use some help with like those types of conversations. Now, part of that is personality wise, like I'm very goal driven and like that just doesn't motivate him at like that. So I have to recognize that, but whatever, we've gotten back on board. What advice do you have for like, we're starting this new system. It's a lot to also be the one to like check in with it, with the kids by yourself. Like how can we get our partners kind of on board with this? Yeah. So I know that that's a good one. And I first want to say there might be times where they just won't, right? Like let's, let's be real, real. In a perfect world, unfortunately, there are times where the other parent or the other partner may not be on board, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you just drop everything and you, you know, don't, don't do it if you feel that's going to work. Um, so there's a few ways sometimes it's, you know, if you know that you're just the person who spearheads, then that's it. And, you know, everyone, the household needs someone to be able to lead and, and direct the ship. And if you're that person to direct the ship, then that's okay. Be that person to direct the ship, um, get it going. And then sometimes it's getting it going and being able to see the positives of it. Like, hey, did you notice so-and-so was able to, you know, brush your teeth and wash your face today and no one said anything? I think it's because, you know, we started with this routine. Um, and so sometimes the buy-in is with them being able to see the success. Um, and so going ahead and, and not necessarily saying, I'm not going to start this until everyone is on board, like even children, right? To say, I'm not gonna start it until, you know, all five of my children are on board. Um, this started with those who are, are willing and, and, and able, um, and then just have the conversation. Sometimes again, it's the reality of, you know, you know, I talk to parents who are just like, oh, I don't really like too much structure, kind of like the free flow of things. Um, and they say that, but in the same time, when you take a look at their day, again, there's certain things that they do at the certain times of the day, right? And if we look at it, even sometimes our leisure time has a time, right? Uh, you know, I'm going to scroll randomly on TikTok, you know, after bed, but that's kind of like our routine. So sometimes it's even just saying, um, hey, like, do you, do you notice that, you know, you made this checklist today or that you, um, you know, every day you, you kind of do this as your routine, um, like my husband goes to the gym every morning, like he has his routine, he goes to the gym, he comes home, he makes the kids lunch. Um, and that's his routine. So I kind of like allow him to notice that he's in a routine. And I think, Hey, I think our kids kind of need to have that pattern, um, where they kind of know what's like, what's coming up throughout the day. Yeah. That's some good advice. And I like that you also brought up for just anyone in general who maybe isn't feeling like they're more like the type B, right? And they're like, I don't like schedules either. Um, that you do have routines, you have rhythms, you have flows. Yeah. And how much I know for me, like, uh, I was just saying, I've been sick for like three weeks. The fact that I've lost so many of my routines yeah. mentally is it really is hard, you know, to like get back on. And I think our, our we need that, our kids need that. Um, all right, one more thing before we close, because I know you work with a lot of um, kids who have diverse needs and we have a lot of parents who attend who are also in the same situation. And they're like, I like this, but mm -hmm. I don't know if it'll work for my family. Do you have any advice for those families who might want to implement these? Yeah. So again, um, doesn't matter, you know, if your child, let's say, if you have an autistic child um, or, you know, a, a child with developmental disabilities, I think sometimes uh, we still seem to take away control because we think you know they're they can't have control and so I want to say even your neurodiverse children um want control and so uh, I think that's really important um that again we're we're giving them that control but I would also say you know for our near our diverse children um you want to take a look at their needs and you want to be able to understand, you know, what would their flow of the day look like? So for, you know, for our diverse kids, sometimes I would say um, some really are sensory seeking, some are not, right? Some you have to, you know, make sure they have that sensory time. And sometimes, you know, it's too much sensory, it's a sensory overload. And so they're going to need those quiet times in their schedule. So really being able to know and understand what the needs are are very important. 
Um, again, giving them that autonomy and that choice um, and just keeping it simple. So you might just want three or four steps for you know each routine. Keep things pretty simple. Um, and when you know, again, when you're teaching them, you want to be able to repeat it and go over it um, a few times. There's definitely a lot of practice. That's the thing. That's for everybody. You definitely want to the practice. This is not something where you just like throw your visual schedule on the wall, a uh, visual visual mm -hmm. schedule on the wall, and say, "This is it. <laughs> this is what we're doing." Um, they're going to need a lot of practice with you running through all of the steps, you know, for maybe again, um, for your diverse kids, it might be a few weeks where you're running through the step, the schedule step-by-step. Step, and then maybe, um, you know, you're going through three of the schedule, three steps of that schedule, and you're allowing them to do the first one on their own. And then you, you know, slowly and gradually, gradually you're stepping back, um, and allowing them to be able to do those steps independently. That's such good advice. I feel like I needed this myself today. Like I was just thinking about because we've all been so sick. I'm like, oh man, our afternoons are like, there's so much extra TV. Cause I'm like, just handle it. This inspired me Marlene today because I'm like, I'm going to go grab my schedules when we're done. I'm going to print them back out, put them in some sheet protectors so we can go for the week because um, this is just a good reminder that. Yeah. Really yeah. Work. And I want to say that too, like we're going to be off track right? Like we don't need to be rigid with this. There is flexibility. You're allowed to be spontaneous. Um, but it's okay to be like, oh, okay, you know what guys, you know, I've been sick for the last few weeks. We're kind of going to get back on track. Um, uh, because I'm sure your kids can feel that too, right? They, I'm sure they've, they felt like things have kind of been off track a little bit as well. So be able to say, Hey, we're going to get things back on track. What do you guys want to start with first or what, what should we do first? Right. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's normal. And I think this is why I think a lot of parents feel stressed because they feel, they fall off and they're like, that's it. They call it quits. Uh, but I would say, keep going, uh, allow that, you know, a flexibility. It's okay to adapt and see what works and what doesn't. Uh, but just keep, keep going, find the right rhythm, uh, for your family and for your child. Cause those might be different as well. Thank you, Marlene. Um, thank you so much. Tell us where we can connect more with you. Yes, absolutely. So um, you can connect more with me on my Cornerstone FS on Instagram. Um, I am also, uh, our visual schedules is Rewardum W, sorry, not W. <laughs> uh, our visual schedules um, are found at Rewardum, R-E-W-A-R-D-U-M-S uh, on Instagram. And uh, that's where you can find me. Awesome. I'm going to have everything Marlene linked up right below the presentation to make it easy. So go there. And if you um, want to check out her freebie, it's linked below. It's the family summer schedule template um, and the no screen time until checklist. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So the summer screen, the summer um, schedules is for, again, individuals who are kind of not sure where to start. And so these are just the guidelines. Okay. It's just a template. It gives you some ideas. Um, of how you can structure uh, those summer days that, again, could be a little bit hectic because our schedule, our normal schedule usually is a little disrupted in, in summer. So it kind of gives you some guidelines for that. Uh, and then the no screen time until checklist is very popular. So this is for the parent who has children that, um, you know, are becoming pretty obsessed with their, their screens. And um, I created it again because my kids are literally waking up, not brushing their teeth, not doing anything, just going down and, and going on screens. And so this is a checklist of the things that they need to do before they can access this, their screen time. Uh, and so there's a template again with some suggested ideas, and then there's a blank one that you can create um, on, their, on their own. So that again, your child knows the expectations of these are the things that need to be done in order for them to be complete. Awesome. Thank you so much, Marlene. Thank you for watching this session. If you have questions, you can feel free to reach out. Um, and again, Marlene, thank you. I like I I feel like every time I do these interviews, I'm like, oh, I needed that today. So I know that there are other moms out there. Um, I will see you at the next session. And thanks again. Okay.